As we look forward to 2021, the biggest thing looming over the year is COVID and its effect on businesses for a second year in a row. If businesses didn't have a plan in place, they do now, and it's all based on our hypothesis on how and when we will overcome this pandemic globally. I don't think anyone expects 2021 to be pre-pandemic conditions, and businesses will continue to experience the long-term impacts of COVID on a variety of fronts, both internally and externally. But there's always opportunity in any and every condition. The question is, do we know what they are and how do we execute to realize them? My name is G-Man Yip, founder and CEO of BitTitan. We're a cloud enablement company that provides solutions to IT professionals that helps them with their digital transformation. Check out my five top industry predictions for 2021. I'd love to know what you think. I'm looking forward to 2021 as we're better equipped with both resources and information heading into the year. From our team to yours, Happy New Year and wishing you a prosperous 2021. Hi, my name is Suresh Krishnan. I'm the CTO of Kaloom and I'm here to talk about my prediction for next year. So one of the key things that's going to happen next year is going to be the widespread deployment of 5G across the world in pretty much all the geographies that we see and also the movement of a lot of applications towards the edge as 5g comes online and it enables like higher throughput lower latency and so on it's gonna make a lot of applications possible that are not possible with wireless today such as like you know virtual reality industrial automation connected cars and so on uh, will become more and more prevalent but they're also going to put a lot of demands on where the applications are hosted so they're going to get closer and closer to the user so it's not going to be in a huge data center but going like very close to the user um, like what we would call like edge data centers which have like significant constraints on the uh, the power the cooling uh, as well as the space so you're going to see everything kind of getting squished down into a smaller footprint and really optimized for deployment at the edge and and consequently like one of the things that is going to happen is like you know the move from uh, virtual machines to containers because they have a much smaller footprint they can be spun up and down faster so um that's something that's certainly going to happen along with the move to 5g and edge so that's my prediction for the year 5g edge and containers so thank you very much for listening to me and we'll see if i was right at the end of next year hey everyone my name is ol engineer and i'm the ceo of luminati networks to say that 2020 has pushed the digital world forward is probably the understatement of the year. As online data continues to be generated at record rates, it also continues to be a driving force behind decision making for businesses that embrace and rely on data collection. This leads me to predict the following for 2021 on the data front. The new online habits we all have acquired are no doubt here to stay. With the online population just growing by the minute, I'm pretty sure there's no slowing down here. With online data collection rate escalating, large enterprises as well as smaller companies are starting to take notice. And today, IT executives and business leaders know that data carries great power. Therefore, it's no longer an option to disregard the data collection process itself or its related technologies, or even the delivery methods. It's the equivalent of burying your head in the sand and can lead to significant negative consequences. We, we see it happens. If implemented incorrectly, online data collection could potentially be used nefariously, which is why regulators have started to keep track of data collection processes. We see this focus shifting there. For example, internet laws are becoming more uh, prevalent in the US, such as opt-in and opt-out privacy law implemented in the state of Maine just a few months ago. However, proper regulation guidelines takes time, much more time than it usually takes for the tech companies and the tech innovators to progress on their own. I believe that 21 will also be the year that more of start to take serious notice and make an effort to ensure that all details relating to data consumption are ethical by design, including the technology that is used to collect the data itself. 
The bottom line, the bottom line is that being transparent and ethical about your data collection process is the way forward. The world of consumers is expecting it from us. I believe that 21 will be the year of responsible and ethical data collection across every industry. Thank you and have a wonderful year. Hi, I'm Jeff Brown. I'm the CEO of Open Systems, and I'm here to give you some predictions for 2021. The first one is I'm going to be sick of doing video calls. Not really a prediction because I'm already there. Uh, on a serious note, I, I think as we look at the predictions for 2021, uh, there are a couple of, of big important areas that we're looking at. One is the network edge is continuing to expand and change as organizations re respond to COVID. And that's really primarily the work from home. We'd seen it starting before COVID, but it's really picked up uh, a, a lot of steam and as people have had to work from home. Uh, and this is unlikely to change in a post-pandemic world. So our customers, enterprise and, and others, will have to find new and integrated scalable solutions that address the new normal. And a good first step toward that is, is adoption of the SASE uh, model, uh, Secure Access Service Edge. Um, we know bad actors are finding new ways to exploit work from home. And uh, you, know, you see things like Zoom-based phishing attacks. Um, I saw a recent uh, statistic that said that um, uh, cloud account hacking was up something like 650%. So clearly this is an area that, that needs to be focused in on because it is here to stay. I think a second one is something that, that we've seen more and more of. Breaches are, in, are an inevitable essentially and catching them early is the most important thing. Uh, case in point, we've seen some of the ransomware attacks that have grown rapidly and it's the general ease to use them and, and have a high success rate that's led to that. Uh, there's been a sharp rise in both um, the number and revenue intake of these ransomware as a service providers. And we've seen the FBI, DHS, C CISA are, are proactively warning healthcare institutions of rapid increase in these ransomware attacks. So being able to identify the attack, understand what's going on, and very quickly respond to it, we think is a really, really important and a, a big trend for next year. And then I think CISOs are going to be looking for a managed security service as a means of both meeting demands to scale these cybersecurity uh, operations. It, you, you, you talk to a lot of the CISOs out there, it's awfully hard to keep uh, up on the technology, to keep the people and find the people that are important for this. So I think looking for people to be able to offload the operational headache of this and use it as a service will also be a third area that we'll, we'll see. So again, um, those are my three, um, I guess four with the uh, with uh, video calling, but my four predictions for next year. Thanks. Hi, I'm Miguel Valdez Faura. I'm the CEO of Bonita Soft, and I'm I'm happy to share with you today uh, my predictions for 2001, uh, in which relate to the process automation market and technologies. Um, I really believe that next year is going to be about governance. Uh, Governance, first of all, uh, as a way in which uh, not only different people that participate uh, in a process automation project are going to collaborate, so business and developers working together in a process automation project, but more about uh, how we can define ownership, uh, uh, how those people can collaborate in an efficient way, um, who is responsible of what, uh, and not only about uh, the first version of a project, but also when you do iterations and when the number of projects in the organization is growing. No? Uh, governance is going to be key and I think we're going to see more and more technologies addressing uh, that need uh, in organizations. And uh, I think we also are going to be talking about governance in, a, in another topic which uh, I usually refer to as uh, the Wild West of RPA implementations um, in which I think BPM technologies or digital process automation technologies are going to bring that governance that is missing in RPA. No? Are going to bring not only the end-to-end uh, -end visibility, um, but are going to provide a better view of what's going on uh, in the different RPA implementation. And we're going to see more and more RPA automation projects uh, as part of a more global BPM, BPM project. Hello, everyone. This is Lorenz Vipil. I am co-founder and CEO of Weka, the storage company for the future. And uh, today I'm here to talk with you about the uh, exciting predictions about the near-term future of 2021, because this is what everyone's been asking us. Um, what I'm going to talk about are actually things we're already starting to see with our large uh, corporate and enterprise uh, companies, and we 
think that we're going to see a lot more of these things in the coming year. None of what I'm going to say is going to be a big surprise, but uh, I think it's important to be said anyways. So the first prediction is cloud is uh, going to become more and more important for the core businesses of these companies. And they're going to start to look at moving uh, their real application to the cloud. They're not going to just dump them on the cloud like was predicted a couple of years ago. What they're going to do, they're going to start thinking, hey, how are we going to leverage the cloud for elasticity, meaning leveraging the cloud for DR, and uh, alongside that, how can we avoid locking on the cloud, so second sourcing the cloud. And uh, getting there will basically mean, hey, let's uh, be able to burst access workload to the cloud while running most of what they're doing on-prem, and we're bursting the access workload, picking the cloud uh, they are doing some on-premises modernization efforts and they're moving a lot of what they're doing into Kubernetes that allows them to run similar way on-premises and in the cloud. The second big modernization effort we're seeing is transferring workloads to GPU compute. Now, a few years ago, customers started doing this for AI machine learning, especially around uh, anything autonomous, but uh, we're now seeing that big data, a lot of HPC workloads with the help from technologies like GPU direct storage and rapids are also making the transition to GPUs and customers are able to condense dozens of uh, CPU servers many times into a single GPU server. So this is quite significant and obviously happening. And the third big thing that's happening nowadays is finally NVMe is going to be the dominant protocol. While there may be more volume of you know, even fiber channel or SAS or even SATA drive still in the market, uh, volumes are such that NVMe pricing is terrific and all the large server vendors have NVMe servers and it's quite obvious going to be the protocol of choice uh, going forward. So just a quick summary, uh, a lot of you are going to move to the cloud but in a responsible way. Uh, a lot of you are going to do way more with GPUs. Uh, it's finally made it to the standard enterprise applications and uh, you're going to switch to Flash and it's going to be on NVMe. That's our three predictions for Weka. Have a terrific 2021.